if we're selling oranges, everybody eats an orange. Great. Right. Broadcast like crazy. But if we're doing leather, plastic, and vinyl restoration, and we're in an area that's got a lot of millennials, and maybe they've got their first set of furniture ever, or they have a leased car, our messaging to them is, unfortunately, it's not going to be effective. Welcome to the Art of Franchise Marketing. Each episode takes a deep dive into the franchise space and explores how the biggest and best brands handle national branding, franchise development, employee recruitment, and localized marketing on a daily basis. This podcast is brought to you by NetSertive, a localized digital marketing partner for franchise networks. NetSertive's Madeline Park talks shop with franchise executives to discuss what's working, what's not, and answers the question, what else can you be doing? to excel at the art of franchise marketing. Hey everyone, welcome back to the art of franchise marketing. My name is Maddie, as you know, and today we have a exciting and entertaining guest with Matt Woodcock from Fibrenew. Matt, thank you for joining us. Maddie, we are going to have so much fun today. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about everything. And I guarantee we're going to giggle a lot. So there you go. There we go. All right, Matt. Well, why don't you kick us off and tell us, you know, who you are, how'd you get into franchising and what you do with Fiber New now? Okay. Well, uh, Matt Woodcock, I am in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And how did I get into this carnival that is franchising? Well, it started way back when I was working in corporate America, much like everybody who gets into franchising at one point was, and had one of my best friends of all time walk into my office and say, Matt, we love you, but you can't come to work tomorrow. It was downsizing. And I got the golden handshake and I said, I will never, ever let that happen to me again. And so I took control of my own future and said, okay, it's time to start a business. Being in my previous industry, I was in radio, so I love doing podcasts. I worked with a ton of franchise businesses over the course of the years. They were the ones I did business with year in and year out. And so I knew that was always my future. And I started looking around and I found an amazing franchise concept. I jumped in with both feet and grew it. It provided for my family. And I was fortunate enough to have somebody come along and knock on my door and say, you've done a great job. I think your business is worth this. And I handed them the keys. <laughs> I, 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 I lived the dream. I, I bought it, built it, it provided, and I sold it for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And also during that time, and kind of going side by side with it, I got into the development side of helping people find my path. I find the future of where they were going. And I absolutely fell in love with that. So when it was time to sell my business and then physically hand over the kit to the new owner, I was approached by the, the management team here at Fibernew. And I started looking at the business and said, this is a company I can stand behind. This is a company I can help people find their future in. And most importantly, sleep really well at night when it's over and done with. So I've been doing that for uh, knocking on a decade now. I love every single minute of it. I have so much fun doing it. And we're going to talk about the marketing of it, which I think is going to be a lot of fun because often when people think about a franchise, they think, oh, well, it's just fast food. Well, it's not. Franchise is a proven system for success that can be replicated start to finish. And when you bring in the marketing and you bring in the systems and you bring in the structure, that's what makes a strong franchise. That's what we're going to talk about today. Exactly. And I I adore that. I think as a franchisee myself, I know my listeners are shaking their head because they're like, Maddie, we know this. But it, it it just is so true that I don't understand why not everyone does franchising. Obviously, it's not for everyone. But the fact that it's, you know, business in a box, be an entrepreneur, you can sell it, you can keep it, you can grow it, you can hand it down. There just really is so many great options there. And and the benefit for us, too, is that in franchising, you know, we're also in corporate and it also feels not like corporate. So it's, you know, it's great to work for some franchisors where, you know, you're you're getting the benefits of, you know, being, you know, helping entrepreneurs and, you know, living the life and teaching them what you've already done. But at the same time, you know, you still feel connected in the business world. And I think that that's important for a lot of franchisees because they don't want to feel isolated and owning their own business. Always, always. I mean, it's, I'll tell you, I'll share with my analogy right off the bat when people talk about franchises. I use baseball. I'm a huge baseball fan. And in my mind, a franchise drops you on third base, right? They give you the tools. They give you the, the playbook. You still have to execute to score the run and be successful, but you don't have to get on first and steal second and be bun over. They just drop you at third base. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's about execution and 
that's what a franchise excels at is execution. I love that. That's such a great analogy. I'm a basketball player myself or fan, but I think that that third base analogy is going to really hit home, no pun intended, for a lot of people. So talk to me about Five Renew. You know, for people who aren't familiar, what does the brand do? What are your mission? How many locations? And, and you know, where are you guys looking to grow? Sure, sure. Well, Five Renew is a Canadian-based company. We're the experts in leather, vinyl, and plastic restoration. I know everybody grab your seats. I know that's not the most exciting business in the world. But I'll tell you what it is. It is an incredibly successful business. We've been around for 37 years. We have 300 locations. We're in six countries. And we can take items and bring them back to like leather, plastic, and vinyl. So whether it's your car, your house, your boat, your airplane, if you have one, I'm sure you do that. The, the hospitals you go to, the restaurants and, and hotels you stay at, we could take all those items and bring them back to like new. So we're saving people time. We're saving people money because it's always cost effective to restore rather than replace them. And there's a huge eco-friendly component to what we do. We're keeping thousands and thousands of items out of landfills every single year. We're using water-based products to, to make our restorations happen. And the foundation here at Fiber New is simple. Process plus product equals success. And at Fiber New, we've had three and a half decades of process. We know how to do it. We know how to help you do it, how to build a great business. You combine that with the product side, where at Fiber New, we make, manufacture, distribute exclusively to our owners. Over 200 proprietary items, so all the, the, the sealers and the, the dyes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. When you have the right way to do it and you have the best products in the business, restorations aren't hard. And that's really where the franchise steps in and helps you build your business to execute accordingly. So now that we've got the 30-second commercial out of the way, Maddie, let's jump in and talk about some cool stuff today. What do you say? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. So let's start off with marketing because I think a lot of people – assume, you know, especially with home services, you know, leather repair, you know, that sort of stuff. They're like, oh, it's not very sexy. You know, maybe they run a digital campaign. People come to you when they need you. But that's just not the case. So talk to me about what you guys are doing on a consumer side so that your franchises are continuing to grow. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, six countries, 300 locations. You know, what are you guys doing in marketing that is making it a non-traditionally sexy concept, you know? high in demand. Sure. Well, it always comes down to the marketing mix. And if people have listened to your podcast or, or know you at all, they understand that you can't just use one system. You've got to touch them in multiple different directions. And for us, it, it is that true marketing mix. I mean, it starts with a vehicle. As simple as it might be, we have all of our owners have a wrapped vehicle. Now, we give them flexibility to have whatever vehicle they, they choose, but we do want it fully wrapped because that's your branding. Right, We're a mobile business. Majority of what we do is done on site to the customer. So it is about showing up looking correct. That's always step one. And that should be a no-brainer for any business when it comes to marketing. Make sure that your first impression is everything it should be. Beyond that, it truly is a mix of social. right? Because it doesn't matter who you are. It seems like the first place you turn is, is either Facebook, Instagram, or Google to figure out how you're going to do something. Or, or YouTube, the, the second largest search engine in the world. We have an amazing YouTube it's because people go out there, they, they look, they say, well, maybe I could do this myself. So we want to make sure we're, we're touching them in the video world. We do a number of podcasts just like this because it's important for people to be able to listen and understand. And at the end of the day, it really just comes down to talking with people. The number one thing we hear is I didn't even know this was an option. Yeah. And so being able to have a business that is service-based where you can walk into someone's home and an hour and a half, two hours later, you're walking out. And they're smiling like a, like a baby on Christmas. They're so excited because their favorite chair, the place where they watched the last Super Bowl, is back to the way it should be. And they get to keep it. And they have all the memories that come with it. Those are the things that make us work. And, and so it is a true mix. It's vehicle. It's imaging. It's before and after. It's video. It's social. It's audio. We're everywhere we can be. Mm -hmm. We're also very, very uh, strategic, I think is the word I was looking for there. We don't do broadcast. We don't do print. It's just too, it's too much scatter, not enough focus. Yeah. And so from there, before and after photos and just talking to people is, is the hallmark of what we do. And I think you touched on a great point there is not only are you more focused in your approach and what I always say is you, you have to be where people are. And that's exactly what you're doing. But at the same time, taking your sales pitch and making it emotional for the customer. Like you said, like they get to keep the chair and all of the memories that come with it. So traditionally people thinking like, oh, it's, you know, 
leather repair and, you know, you know, get your couch fixed, get your chair fixed. But instead, the message being like, you know, don't throw out the, you know, symbolic Super Bowl chair, that sort of thing where people are like, oh, appealing to that emotional side of things is super important in your messaging. And I think that that can kind of get lost, especially on franchisees who aren't traditionally educated in marketing or might just, you know, they have a million things to do. So they're just saying, okay, here's here's my ad post. What's the next thing on my list? So ensuring that that's, you know, kind of in the mix as well. So once you have that marketing go out, what is it like for your franchisees in terms of collecting leads and attributing spend back to the actual channel? Because I'm sure a lot of people are listening and going, that's great. You're marketing across a ton of channels, but how how do you know which ones are actually working? How do you know when to turn one off and when to turn one on and, and, and increase or decrease budgets? Oh, that is the magic question that everybody wants to answer. Because if you can figure out where your ads are generating the most revenue, well, you'd stop all the others. And uh, yeah. I, I told you, I spent many years working in the, in the advertising industry and the radio side. And a car dealer once told me, he goes, Matt, we advertise all year long. But we really only need to talk to people about four days before they make their purchase. Yet mm. we spend all the other 360 plus days talking to them, but we just need to hit them at that one point. And so for us, it's about how can we attribute the dollars spent to the business? Well, you can track. You can obviously track with codes and discount pieces. And the, the best way, Maddie, is just ask them, hey, how did you hear? This? Was it a referral from a friend? We'd love to let them know. And we do a lot of that. Did you see our vehicle? Well, that's great. We have QR codes in our vehicle. Did you come through that way? Did you just simply see us, hear about us, and then ultimately Google us? There's so many different ways to get there. And short of physically asking them, I don't know if there's a solution. So I'll throw that back to you. That's kind of your wheelhouse. Why don't you tell me what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I think to your point, that is the magic question. And, and you should be asking people, but there's always that mix of they're never telling the truth. I get that question. I'm like, ah, Google, when it could have been two different things, you know. I think the most important thing is is holding each of your channels accountable for certain metrics. And instead of saying, you know, here's five different outlets and here's the spend and, you know, I want to increase leads. Well, great, you could increase leads and, and maybe, you know, with codes or with asking people, you can sort of get a, a level of where the majority are coming from. But the, tra the, the fact of the matter is, is you should know where the majority of your leads are going to come in before you turn that, that system on. So for instance, Google, that's where people go when they're ready to purchase. When they need information, they're ready to purchase. That's where they're going. So that should be your highest you know, conversion rate ad there. When it comes to social, more brand awareness. So instead of having, oh, I don't know how many leads came from Facebook, it doesn't work. Well, how many impressions, how many reach, how many clicks or links did you get from that? So holding each of your outlets accountable so that it tells a story rather than just saying, you know, what's working and what's not. Because to your point, again, it all works in tandem with one another to, to, to you know, get through that process. So my next question is, and, you know, I don't want to on your previous career, but it's interesting that you say, you know, we don't do broadcast and your history is in radio. And so you have a little bit more knowledge. So I talked to a lot of franchises that are like, should I do broadcast? They have no experience. They think it's, you know, talk to me about why you guys specifically choose not to do broadcast. I understand, you know, the, the scattered approach, but can you tell me a little bit more in depth as to why, you know, Five Renew chooses to spend their money in, in other digital channels? Well, when it comes to broadcast, you have such a huge marketplace. I mean, if you're talking radio, there's no way to geographically separate it, right? Yeah. If you're talking TV or if you're talking CTV, there's some different ways you can geofence and get it together. But what it ultimately comes down to is we're not for everybody. And I think that's the key component. If we're selling oranges, well, everybody eats an orange. Great. Right. Broadcast like crazy. But if we're doing leather, plastic, and vinyl restoration, and we're in a an area that's got a lot of of millennials and they're just, you know, they, maybe they've got their first set of furniture ever, or they have a leased car. Our messaging to them is, unfortunately, it's not going to be effective. I'm not going to say it's wasteful, but it's not effective. We would rather allow our owners to have full control and, and really target it. I don't, I don't want to use a gun reference, but really use, <laughs> really be able to, to, to focus it. And instead of trying to use a shotgun approach, be very focused on it. And at Fiber New, we give our owners 
hundred percent autonomy to use their marketing dollars the way they see fit. We obviously give them the, the support on it. We do branding from the top level down as every good franchise should, mm -hmm. but from a local individual franchisee level, we want them to spend or invest is a better term for us and that's their money and be able to target the people they want. And if that means going to the fire station up the street and taking a meal to the firemen and say, Hey, you know what we'd love at Fiberty, we'd love to support our, our first responders. We're going to bring you dinner. And oh, by the way, while we're here, we're going to clean and condition all the furniture in the fire station. Yeah. Talk about, is there a better way to invest marketing dollars than that? Right. There's really not. Yeah, no, I, I really like that. And so do your franchisees, do they have a required spend or is it suggested spend? It is a minuscule required spend for Google because we sure. do believe you should have a presence out there, but I'll make you blush a little bit. Last year we nestled at 98 click. So because <laughs> exactly. So a hundred to $200 a month is pretty much all you need to invest in with Google. Wow. Beyond that, it's at their discretion to really go out and, and, and invest their marketing dollars where it makes sense for them. Sure. And that's, again, part of the hallmark of this being a, a business that understands our customer. Again, we're not new, right? We're not, we're not touchy-feely. We're not, we're not poking holes in place. We're saying, we know who we are. We know the lanes we want to be in. Let's maximize those. Yeah, I love that. And, and to expand further on that, you talked about, you know, we, we work on the brand. We give our franchisees the plan and the brand. Talk to me about your brand. What are you guys doing to stay innovative? What are you doing with your national advertising fund? How are you in the competitive landscape? Because you are a veteran brand, but you're still growing. So how do you make sure that that brand is continuing to, to keep up with the times and stay digitally fresh and, and have that franchise appeal both on the development and the consumer side? Okay. Well, it definitely comes back to our partners, right? The, the people we have helping us. Because if you, if you don't take advantage of people smarter than you, probably not going to be in business for very long. So <laughs> the, the, the companies that we utilize to help us with their digital do an outstanding job. And they give us the metrics and allow us to continue to fine tune. Plus, it's a lot of taking feedback from our owners, right? Who better to know where our business is going than the people out there on the front lines every single day hearing it? And it is a, it is a combination of branding, right? It's simply putting our name out there. Who are we? Taking advantage of the channels. We're a before and after world, right? If you just hear fiber to it, you think, oh, okay, they spelled it wrong. Or if you just saw the logo, you'd be like, okay, I don't really understand exactly what they do. But when you start to see a before and after photo of a, of a car restoration or a piece of furniture or a boat, now you're starting to get a sense for who we are. And so it is bringing in before and after photos. And using all the resources, we'll use Facebook as an example, using carousel ads, using very short videos, letting people know that this is not just some guy in a truck showing up with some equipment. It, there's actually a brand behind it. YouTube is amazing for us. We have an entire channel, Fiber New International, where people can go on and whether they want to watch a video about franchises itself or a short 45 second video on what a restoration might look like begin to end. We want to put content in people's hands. And it goes back to understanding for people, how do they, how do they absorb information? And this is the ultimate marketing you know, conversation of today's day and age. How do you take your knowledge? I don't watch TV. Right? I don't watch the news. Mm -hmm. I get all of my news from podcasts, all of it. And so if you wanted to reach me and when I'm in a news gathering world, you better be sponsoring whatever podcast I'm listening to. Mm. So it's about understanding how people are gaining their knowledge. And at FiberNet, we use Nextdoor, we use Facebook. I mean, we use all the places you would find individual decision makers for our, for our yeah. homeowner customer tier. We're using industry magazines for our mid-level and manufacturer tiers so that people could see us out there. And it is just about continuing to, to reaffirm or establish the brand. We are the experts in leather, vital, and plastic restoration. You have to know what you're doing, Maddie, to be able to put in your word, right? You just do. Because if you don't, people are going to call you out on it, and you're not going to be there three and a half decades later. Right. And I think that that is, is, is so true, and it, it goes back to the kind of core of your franchise of having a true brand promise and being able to fulfill that. So to your point, putting expert in your name, having the right materials, having the right people so that while you're marketing, you're not, you know, against a brick wall. You know, if your operations don't match your marketing, 
it's it's never going to work. It's always going to be a grind and not necessarily in a good way. But, you know, if they're working together, it's obviously going to continue to grow. So I think a quick tip that I wanted to ask you is I think a lot of franchises can relate to the before and after pictures, how that, you know, can work. How are you or how does, you know, your team gather those shots from your franchisees? Because I think a lot of franchises say, do it, take the pictures, post them, send them. And then there's just like a 99% drop off of it not happening. So how are you guys encouraging your franchisees to do that and submit it so that you constantly are getting the, the content that you need? Okay. I'm going to answer that question when we come at it a little bit, a little bit of a longer path, if you will. Yeah. Cause one thing I didn't bring up in the, when we talk about marketing and building a franchise, you got to bring in the right people. Right. And if you are an open door and anybody with a pulse and a checkbook can join your, your franchise, you're going to have problems. And we're very fortunate here at Fibernoon that we be very strategic and who we bring in and who we invite to be part of our family. That goes through our process, which we can address at a later time or another podcast, but when it comes to the before and after photo piece, we've actually built some internal software. We wrote our own code, wrote our own, our own app within our platform for people to take before and after photos that allow them to ghost one image directly on top of the other so that you're taking the same image both ways. We start that from day one. We encourage them that you should give that to your client with every invoice. When you've finished, you should hand them the before and after photos. That way, if you worked on Sally's sofa, she can go to book club and say, look what Matt and the team at Fiber did for my sofa. Right There's your marketing. At the same time, we also want you to upload that. So if you're going to take, if you're going through trouble taking the photos, you hit one little button and it uploads into our shared file so that we have thousands upon thousands of images. That way, flip it around, you walk into a doctor's office and you're there to hire Matt with Fiber to where the experts in leather, vinyl, plastic restoration. I'd love to be your resource. I'd love to help you when you need us. Here's some images of what we do. You have a thousand before and after photos of exam room tables that are exactly like what they have in their office. Right. Instant credibility start to finish. And the long, the, the short answer to your part, Melon, you make it easy for people. Mm -hmm. If you make it easy for them, they'll do it. I like that. The, making it part of the process. And I really like the giving it to the the customer, you know, with their invoice or with their, you know, overview of their service. I think that that's such a no brainer. And I literally I'm in a service business and I've never heard of someone doing that. So that is like obvious genius right there. And I love that. So shifting a little bit because we're coming up on time, but I could talk to you all day is franchise development. So now you've got your brand you got your consumers, the trickle down into, you know, the lead funnel and the marketing. But what about expanding to your development side? Obviously, you talked about bringing in the right people, but how are you reaching those people? And you guys are in six different countries. How do you keep up with, you know, different demands, different cultures and, and having a huge growing system that still has, you know, exponential potential to, you know, continue growing? Well, you're right. There is no shortage of ability for us to continue to grow where we're headed. And, and that's one of the reasons I'm here. But the other reason I'm here is that we have a great team. We've got a team of, of developers that understand the business. But more importantly, they understand Fiber New first. Mm -hmm. And to me, that, that was so critical. Everybody always says, well, you don't have to love the product that you represent. But it sure makes life a whole lot easier when you understand right. the brand and you understand what they're looking for. And, and uh we call them fiber new people, right? We, we look for fiber new people. And that is about communicating what we're looking for, whether it to our consultant network saying, look, this is who we are. This is what we're looking for. Let's, let's make it easy for everybody. If I tell you exactly who I'm looking for, I can give you that avatar. I can give you that, that, that focal point. It's going to make your life easier and you're going to be much more successful and you're going to love dealing with us. Mm -hmm. But we're, when we're doing our branding, we let people know that this is what we're looking for. Fiber is not an all boys club. We have a number of female operators that make this business super successful. We have a number of husband and wife teams, full families that make this happen. And so it's about communicating out to our lead gen. This is what we're looking for. This is the type of people we're looking to attract. And also letting people know that we're not, it's not up to us to make that decision. Let's have that first conversation. And as you know, with me, I'll talk to anybody for a while, usually. <laughs> I will talk with anybody for 15, 20, 30 minutes 
And I'm quick to tell them right from the very beginning. I have two requests when we start. The first one is that we're always moving forward. As if we reach a stage where we're missing meetings or we're, our wheels are kind of spinning in the sand, that's usually a bad sign. Mm -hmm. But the second one is if at any time Fiber2 is not perfect and good is not good enough, Fiber2 is not perfect for you and where you want to go, let's stop. Talk to me about it. If I can't help you with Fiber2, I can maybe direct you to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit. If you're happy and the placement's made and they have their future going on, guess what? I win. That's what I meant by earlier about being able to sleep well at night. If I can help somebody find their path, that's truly what I'm here for. I just happen to be at a company that not only supports that, but can be the solution for the majority of people I talk to. I love that. And for the emerging brand listening that are saying, well, that's good. That's great. You can be picky. Obviously, you know, the goal is not to bring to let anyone in, but I need those franchise fees to grow. I need cash in, you know, intake to grow the operations and to, to help the support so I can validate. You know, what are your suggestions there? Because you've been in the game forever. So, you know, I think there's a there's a, a push and shove when it comes to emerging brands and wanting to expand. One of the things I'd like to see emerging brands focus on more is geography. Mm -hmm. Put three or four different owners in an area so that not only can they support each other with marketing, support each other, you know, socially so they can build together, but also so they can pace off each other. Everybody has this, this great quote of, well, my market's different. If I have four owners there, your market's not different. And so if I'm an emerging brand, I'm really geo-targeting cities or markets. And okay, I want to put four people here. Maybe they're only going to buy single or individual units. They're not going to buy sevens, eights, twelves, whatever. Or they're each going to buy a quad. But if you can bring people together in a market, to me, that helps. And it, from the franchisor side, it's great because if you bring in three, and let's say one doesn't necessarily succeed the way they want to and they exit, I guess when you have two others in the market that can pick up the pace. And yeah. now all the activity in the market, all the research in the market, all the, the marketing that everybody's spent to the marketplace isn't for naught. And you're not leaving customers hanging. So that to me is the secret sauce for an emerging brand is to pick a market or three, really focus on those markets and put some people. And what is your suggestion for people, for the ones listening that are like, okay, Matt, that sounds good. How do I geo-target for Fran Dev? Because traditionally, if you, you know, throw some PPC money at it, the volume is just very low. So, you know, what are your tips for marketing so that you can sell off those two or three perfect territories so that you can grow, you know, from the inside out? Well, let's see. <laughs> how to do target it is always, always an interesting question for that. It depends how you're getting your lead gen. And if you're working with consultants, you can let them know that this is a targeted area. And there's ways to promote inside your consultant networks. You can use strategic media. You can use Facebook. You can use things like that. And at that point, maybe you do do some broadcast in the, in the regional area right. to target people. If it's a service business, maybe you're talking to some of the, um, the, the skilled technical schools there. Why not reach out to a, a diesel mechanic school or just any trade school and say, we actually have an opportunity for somebody who doesn't want to go work for somebody else. So there's, a, there's some strategic ways to find those people. But the other part of that I'd look at is, is where are you located? If, mm -hmm. Are you a service business? Where are you, where's your distribution coming from? If you're an owner of, a, of emerging franchise, where do you want a second house? Right, let's find some fun places and let's build it that way. Yeah, no, that's great. Because I think the approach to have, while it should be similar to consumers with a different target audience, a lot of times franchises approach it as a whole different beast. They, you know, throw some money at the brokers or they throw some money at, you know, Google. And then they say, where are my leads? Why are they not where I want them? Why are they not qualified? They don't have, you know, the investment. And the truth is it kind of works backwards for Fran Dev, where for consumer, if you have a thousand dollar budget, and the more highly you target an area and that thousand dollars goes into a smaller circle, you're going to get even better results. For FranDev, that's different because the search volume is much lower. So as you start to target it more, chances are you're not even going to hit the budget. So it, it works a little backwards there. But to your point, you know, really pushing a geographic area doesn't just mean you know, typing in a city and clicking, OK, Google. It means an area takeover, the broadcast, the trade schools put up a billboard, you know, advertise in the papers of 
you know, a business opportunity is coming to town and we've got two to offer. So who's going to raise their hands? You know, getting in front of everyone in the town and not just in the, you know, traditional franchise development marketing sense is is super important. And, you know, I think for a lot of people, it feels like going backwards because they typically wouldn't take out billboards for Fran Dev or like you said, broadcast. But the smaller, you know, those areas are, you have to be absolutely everywhere to sell those very specific territories. So I appreciate your insight on that. And then, you know, my final question to you is, how does the international come into play for you guys? You know, are they a lot of different visas? Are you targeting international? Are you trying to grow to new countries? Is it happening organically? Because I think that's a, the next step for a lot of these mid-size almost veteran brands that, okay, we, we, we got the North America thing. We get it. You know, how do we become global? And that is just a monster. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a conversation that could go on for hours and hours. And a couple, a couple of ways to address that. The first one for us, it's organic. Mm -hmm. When we, we're getting people who are maybe looking for E2 visas coming to the U S have established. And now they maybe want to go home. And so it's, it's okay. reverse sell. It's a reverse addition, if you will, to help them expand into their home countries. We're also a, a company because we make manufacturers, distributor products, we have to be able to import. And so for us, that's a big piece to go out and do a little research before we get started and say, okay, can we import to this country? Are the tariffs going to be so high? Is it going to be such a, a red tape nightmare that it's just not worth it? So understand your infrastructure going into a new country. Does it make sense? Can you train and support? Can you train and support in the language? Very, very big barrier for a lot of people because uh, not everybody speaks English. Not everybody speaks French. We've got to make sure that we can, we can communicate to them in the language that they need to so that they can learn. So there's a lot of, of back office things you need to do when you're looking at it. We look at it from, from a sense of it's got to be perfect. I mean, and, and that, that's kind of the baseline for us and everything we do. But when we're looking at international expansion, it has to be the right person. We need them to be a true fiber new person because this is not a business where you can invest a couple hundred thousand dollars and hide behind a computer. Mm -hmm. You have to be involved in the business. So if I was talking to an emerging brand, if I was talking to that, that tiered brand that's getting ready to expand, look at the country. Look at what it, what it's like to operate in that country before you just say, Hey, yeah, we'll take, we'll take that guy. Well, well let's roll the dice and try mm -hmm. Make sure the infrastructure, both for the country, for them and for your own internal infrastructure can support it. That's so critical. I think that's such a good point too, because even with Canada, even with awesome Canada and the U.S. based franchises, we still have issues you know, when it comes to vendors and currency and what are what are you billing? What currency are you billing in? What does that leave the price points at? So if you can take the struggles that you have just USA to Canada and imagine doing that overseas with a language barrier, you know, it's it's easy to say, you know, so and so from, I don't know, you know, Greece wants to open 12 locations and he's going to write the fat check I and mean, it'll be fine because he's got a ton of money to make it work. To your point, he could probably make it work, but can you make it work as a franchise? Because how, how are you, you going to support that person? Are you going to be able to take the support calls at two in the morning? Are you going to have somebody there for him? I mean, right. that, it, it's that infrastructure that you have to have for them as you're making that international expansion. So we're, we're a firm believer of grow strategically. Make sure it makes sense. Don't just take the, the person just because. It's very important. I love that. And it, yeah, it goes down to even an international, is it the right person? With a little bit more of the right person also comes with their area, the culture, is it going to be a fit? So Matt, thank you for your advice on that. And you know, I have two final bonus questions that everyone loves, and I think you guys, you'll knock these out of the park. So the first one is, what does success mean as a franchisor? And does that differ from how you would view success as a franchisee? Success for a franchisor is a very successful business model where you're, you're supporting hundreds and hundreds of families and you're, you're, you're solving your problems. So Success for a franchisor is being able to take that model. Let's go back to the very beginning. Process plus product equals success. Taking that model, being able to replicate it over and over again, and 
being able to show that we are continuing to grow, that Fiberdu, we've never gone backwards in size from day one. We've right. continued to grow every year. And when we see renewals and when we see people coming in and saying, I, I want to do more, how can I be better? That's the success from the franchisor side. From the franchisee side, success is control. One simple word, control. Have they been able to establish that control? But that's why everybody, everybody is coming to us. Everybody's looking at a franchise. They want control. Do they control their income? Control over their time. Doesn't matter how rich you are, you can't find another hour of the day. Mm -hmm. Control over their family. And if we can help them find that control, that balance, everything else kind of melts. You know, if you if you if you if you're doing what you want to do and you're smiling all day long and you're you're making your kids soccer games and being home at six o'clock for dinner every night is important to you and that's happening and your smile is there. Mm -hmm. Everything else falls into place. And so control is what, what my word would be for the franchisee. I love that. And then lastly, if you could give one piece of advice to a corporate franchisor, what would it be? And if you could give a piece of advice to a franchisee, what would it be? From a corporate franchisor, I would be do what's right. And to me, that's, that, that's such a founding principle for us here at Fiber News. Do what's right. Do what's right for the candidate. Do what's right for the franchise. Do what's right. And sometimes that gets to the wayside for other reasons. So I'd leave that one alone. For the franchisee, find your smile. I love if you're that. Not, if, if you're not smiling, stop. Doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're not smiling, stop what you're doing and find your smile. I love that. So now anytime I have to do accounting in my franchises, I'm going to be like, I'm not smiling, babe. You got to do this. Pass it off to the husband. <laughs> Always got to be smiling. <laughs> there you well, go. I love that. Thank you so much for joining us. Everyone, definitely connect with Matt Woodcock on LinkedIn. He's an incredible franchise influencer, and I'm sure you'll see him about. And check out Five Renew on their website, on Facebook. As you've heard, they are everywhere. So definitely keep in touch with them. And Matt, we're looking forward to seeing what you and your brand continue to do. Thanks, Maddie. Thanks for listening to The Art of Franchise Marketing. This show is brought to you by NetSertif. We help franchise brands and multi-location businesses run localized digital marketing at scale. To learn more, visit netsertif.com.